Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Featuring special guests Phil and Campbell Valentine, a.k.a. the Podgoats. And now, Rich Redman. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the debut episode of The Rich Redman Show. Woo-hoo. I mean, we searched and searched for titles for this show. I did like a blast out on social media. I was like, what do you think? I had, There were some great names that came in, like really, really good stuff. But I was like, Jimmy Kimmel Show, Jimmy Fallon, Johnny yeah. Carson. Big and Rich. Let's yeah. <laughs> get the symbol. Get the symbol, guys. We need the symbol over here. But this is the this is our debut episode. And uh, if you've been following me on the net, guys, uh, my my name is Rich Redman. I'm going to be your host today. Um, if you've been following us at Pick Rich's Brain on Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, and YouTube, that's where we talk about all things music, motivation, and success. And this show is going to be more of a long form conversation. We don't even really have a format yet, but my guests today are going to help us find it. And today I'm joined by Phil and Campbell Valentine. Hello, hello. Phil Valentine. You know Phil as a an award-winning talk show host, and he's had this gig for 24 years on, I want to get this right, w, WTN, which is a cumulus media station, and you broadcast every day from 3 to 7 p.m. Central Standard. That's right. And in addition, you're an author, you're a filmmaker, you're a screenwriter. Did you do a little Acting too, right? Uh, a little bit, yeah. To which we can get into that. We're dropping Minnesota. I love it. Oh yeah, Please. that was my big line. That was an Atlas <laughs> yeah. shrug. Yeah. You remember it? You re- you oh, yeah. always remember oh, yeah. your first line. I just oh, want to sure. say I'm not sure where we got the notes on Phil Valentine being an actor, but <laughs> wiki wiki. But yeah, I wrote those. I think. Yeah. I tell you what, we we couldn't have a show. Without Mr. Jim McCarthy. Jim McCarthy, yay, Jim, chief yay. bottle washer, CEO of Jim McCarthy voiceovers.com. Jim also has his own podcast, which is called The JMVO Weekly Primer. The JMVO Weekly Primer. And it's great. You have conversations with athletes, business leaders, thought leaders. We're going to do the same thing. We're talking to celebrities, we're talking to filmmakers, we're talking to actors, musicians. Yeah, whoever wants to talk to us. Later today, we've got Miss Victoria Jackson coming on from SNL. I mean, she was doing comedic scenes with Chris Farley and Phil Hartman. She plays a mean ukulele. It's going to be so fun. She does handstands. Handstands. Yeah, I don't know if we have room for that. Yeah. We could do some kind of... You know. This I got to stick around and see. And then even later today, I've got my longtime rhythm section, uh, Kurt Allison and Tully Kennedy. They're the bass player and guitar player for the Jason Aldean band. Mm-hmm. We've been touring the world together, finishing each other's sentences um, for 20 years, wow. which is an amazing thing. So we'll probably be talking a lot about music and teamwork and leadership and disruption and who knows where we're going to get into today. But I really appreciate you guys coming and being on this debut episode here in Crash Studio in beautiful Brantioch, Tennessee. Yes. <laughs> you go two streets Rich, over. And, that's right. This, look at the sign. And, and this is like, they just hung this thing yesterday. I it love that. Beautiful. So the next thing is we're going to put the, the cables underneath the table. We're going to drill a hole. It's going to look nice and tidy. And then we're going to have Rich Redmond coffee mugs. Oh, Ooh. then you will be there. Huh? We, we got to have You'll that. You'll be professional. Yeah. yeah. The Phil Valentine coffee mugs. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. right. Of course. <laughs> we should have brought our, we need some pod goats, uh, coffee mugs. Yeah. Right? Speaking yeah. of pod goats, like, yeah. so everyone knows, you know, you are, uh, you know, um, a name in this industry of broadcasting and being a host. Um, but you guys as a team, how did this idea come up? You have this thing called Pod Goats, and it's an awesome podcast where you pick one subject for around an hour, and you guys just riff on it. Sometimes I can't even tell the difference who's talking because That's your voices are. Saying. Everybody says that your voice. See, but who said that? I don't know. You did got you a voice for radio. You really do, and then you do all the the JPEGs for the thumbnails. Yeah, they're yeah. so the cool. Covers, they're right, comedic. Yeah. They really are. <laughs> I usually yeah. just use him as a little way to take a stab at this guy. Yeah, he does. And the Disney one, he actually illustrated that when he 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 yeah. wrote that. He so drew that. Did you do that. Yeah. Oh wow, this is a little shameless plug. How do did it. I do the Disney? That's what we're here. We're Very here famous to plug Disney. You did the whole well, thing, right? You did both characters. right? Here's how it started. <laughs> well, to understand it, we need to go back ten years. <laughs> we got time. No, uh, I well, I just you know, I've got the iPad that's got the Photoshop stuff, and I get on there with the pencil. It's easy as pie. You get on there, you draw whatever you need to do. If you can actually draw, it's easy as pie. You know, <laughs> well, yeah. not with me. I can't draw flies, but I thought I. <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, we talked about he draw flies. That I've is never a, heard that. That is a southern ism. Where are you yeah. from? 
uh, from North Carolina. Okay, there's a thick accent in Carolina. I remember mm. the, one of the first people no. I met from Carolina. I was yeah. like, this guy has a rubber band in his mouth. And they said they say <laughs> worder. Yeah, worder. No, oh, no. Yeah. And you get like four syllables out of no. Oh yeah, no. It's incredible. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So where were we? Oh yeah. yeah. But but I, so oh, he told right. me he was going to illustrate this thing, and I said okay. But I didn't think it was going to be like that. So he drew it, you know, shaded it, colored it, did the whole nine yards. I thought it was really good. It's the the Disney episode on Pod Goats. Thanks, pops. I love yeah, it. Certainly well. <laughs> I mean, and look at some of the subjects. I wrote down so some proud. of these subjects: cooking, psychology, inventions, games, sports. Pranks it was right around April Fool's Day. Mm -hmm. Scandals. I mean, I love that angle. Yeah. It's like we're going to talk about this one thing. Well, we might get derailed, but we're going to try to stay on task. Yeah, we try to. Yeah. Topical. Well, we got ADD, so you know. Yeah. Very topical. I think we all do nowadays. We're like getting hit with tweets and IMs and direct messages and emails. It's like overload. Do you guys ever so like like I've got my phone right here between my legs, which is probably not good for testicular yeah, cancer. Yeah, too but, much uh, information. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like radiating, just so cooking my eggs. What do you, you, uh, you call and vibrate yourself? Is that what you do? It's just, there's so much coming in, you know, and look at this. None, none of you guys have your phone except for Jim. No, I got mine right here. Oh, yeah. It's Sometimes just all vibrate. Yeah. Sometimes you just need a break from it. Oh, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Especially people his age. They're all into. That's all we do. Yeah. Well, now, one of the topics of Pod Goats or one of the selling points is that the, the generation gap and you know millennials get the bad rap you even guys have that in the description of your of your podcast and all millennials i think are described as people with the cutoff age is i think 35 years old mm -hmm. so you're tw I right that. yeah i mean that's that's close phil right for me my, that's cutting it close my other yeah, buddy close. phil is in the other room he's so sawing logs um he's a millennial is he? yeah and he's on a very tight sleep till noon schedule because mm -hmm. he's a creative and i might have to have a conversation with him I have to say, look, you might have to start getting up earlier. You know? Well, the two things about millennials is they have to have their phones charged and they got to stay hydrated. I don't know that's that that's necessarily true. That is true. You always are saying. What do you mean with like energy <laughs> drinks? Like No, no, just, you know, always got to be drinking water. This is coming from this man's head. So yeah. No, I'm, I'm serious. And What's, his brother's the worst. I think your, your car drinks like two or three gallons a day or something like that. That's that, water poisoning. I think it is too. That could be too much. Yeah. But he's working. He's, he works, he sweats and Tennessee works out. Tennessee tap. Oh, you yeah. know, that's not, I don't know who, what's, what's in that. You know, you guys are drinking Tennessee tap right now. Sorry. Well, he says it's oh, water. Good Lord, this is tap water. A little like, aspartame. Yeah, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so what's your take on your generation? I mean, you do get a bad rap, but I'm telling you, I, I think that you guys have some brilliant ideas. Yeah. Your mind works completely different than mine. But to be what? fair, didn't Gen X get a bad rap too? It, Thank you so much. That's exactly what I was going to say. Okay. Every generation, I feel like the older generation has said they've lost their minds. They're lazy. They're listening to this crazy kind of music, no matter what kind of music it is. And I think that especially with how divisive things are right now, we're finding like a commonality of just things we find interesting. And of course, you know, we give each other a hard time and come at it from different angles. But it's something that is universally intriguing. You know, I think you're right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we we both uh, have different opinions on different things. We the only thing we never talk about on the show is politics, which is the one thing I do talk about on my on my radio show. Right. Yeah. But we just we don't want to go there. This is this is a respite from the politics. This is about everything else in the world that you've listed: cooking, mm -hmm. Disney, doppelgangers, uh, pranks, and everything else that we can think of. And we sit around and brainstorm. He comes up with the uh, most of the ideas. And then he uh, researches everything, and then we sit in, down in the studio and just record the thing, and I just hang on. And like what you were saying with social media, we get just bombarded with all of this stuff that it's, nobody cares, but it's just inconsequential stuff. And I think we both were attracted to the idea of, let's talk about stuff that's not getting the spotlight as much. I mean, right. politics. Right. It's yeah, had its day in the sun. Yeah, yeah we're all <laughs> and I do that four hours a day. So yeah. you know, last thing I want to do is do a podcast. Yeah, how do you stretch four on. hours out of politics? Because I got to tell you, I get I get a bad rap in my band. Either I get a bad rap, or they're like, maybe Redmond's got to figure it out. But like when my band will be up on the bus, maybe I'm the last one. I come up like, what's up, guys? I load my you know my luggage into the bay, and they're like, oh, we're talking about such and such. They're like, I'm like, what? They're like, Redmond is your your head is in the sand. I said, I do it on purpose. I don't watch the no, the news. I'm completely ignorant. I only pay attention to the things that I can control. Mm -hmm. There you go. I mean. Which is very little, right? Yeah, that's, that's poetic. I love you know that. what I mean? And they're like, Redmond, you didn't hear about the shooting. You didn't hear about this school thing. You didn't hear about who's running. I'm like, I get my news from you guys. There you go. Twitter. Exactly. That's where I get my news 
Mm-hmm. That's where you're at. Kirk Twitter feed. Is Twitter and if you get too invested in the news, you watch it for too long, it gets depressing. Man. Now, I want to say to everybody out there, please don't listen to a word these people are saying. You need to, <laughs> we're just ripping his entire career, career in politics play. and listening to Phil Valentine's show so we can analyze all this for you so you know what's going on. Yes. That's a good question, though, that you bring up. How do you separate yourself from that affecting who you are? You've been dealing with it day in and day out for so long. Yeah. Well, I mean, people are going to define me. What's interesting, and Campbell will tell you more about this, His the people that are his, you know, his friends or his age group, they had a preconceived notion about me. Right. right. Which was? Which was, which is the leader. Drum roll. <laughs> uh, not funny. Uh, <laughs> Bolden. <laughs> Oh my God, you, you, have to, you have to give me some kind of prompt here. Uh, no, they, they, yeah. I had a friend of mine that's a girl who's my, I'm 24, and uh, she listened to the Pod Goats, and she came up to me and she was like, I listen to the Pod Goats, and man, I thought I hated your dad, <laughs> but I love him. Right. I mean, you are a likable guy. I'm, Thanks, like, Rich, immediately, like, that. I mean, that's in my book, Crash Course for Success, Five Ways to Supercharge right Your Personal Life. Find personal it on life. Amazon <laughs> and wherever fine books are sold right there. Um, you know, it's like being likable is paramount. The first thing, two smiling guys walking up through my lawn, firm handshake, just fantastic. Oh, you thank know, you. It's, Appreciate it's it. everything in life. Well, people, look, it, depending on your politics, you get a preconceived notion. I'm mean, the people on the right do the same thing about the people on the left. It's, you know, I mean, there are people like Rachel Mad, uh, Mad, I call her Rachel Madcow, Rachel Madcow. <laughs> not that I'm, not that I'm prejudiced against her or anything, but I don't know what she's like. Uh, personally, yeah. she might be delightful when she's not talking about mm-hmm. politics, right. but I don't care for her on BSNBC. Uh, was that a slip too on MSNBC? <laughs> so I don't watch her, but I don't have anything against her. Mm-hmm. But there are people that just they think you have to hate the other side. You can disagree and not be disagreeable. And now, would you agree with me? Agree with me that uh, to really get to what the news is and what the truth is, or as close as possible to the truth, you would have to watch two Everything. news sources, yeah. at least two. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what I do because I, I, you know, I don't watch BSNBC, but I do follow them on Twitter. <laughs> And I look at some of the stories and I see the commentary and things like that. I do the same thing with CNN, Fox News, Bloomberg, AP, New York Times. I get my news from all sorts of different sources because the the sad part is is that nobody is going to tell you this, the whole truth. And what I tell people, media bias is not what they tell you, it's what they don't. That's where the media bias comes in. And it can be on both sides. So... You have to put the full picture together to get uh, the full picture. And Context. you don't get it from one source. Mm-hmm. Context. Now, mm-hmm. did, you, did you inherit this passion for politics? I did not. No. no. <laughs> so you're more of a creative. Yeah. He's a, he's I, a prankster. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Honestly, that you, is, that's where my heart is. Are you going to go into like, comedy, like study improv? or, or, or is, uh, right? no. Let me tell you something. They had a doppelganger episode, and one of the biggest things I picked up, and I, I actually talked about it on my episode, <laughs> was... The fact that you you resemble Zach Braff from Scrubs. Yes, right. and I've only had one other person ever tell me that. But, what are but now, yeah. I've had people tell me that. Yeah. After enough. listening to your podcast, <laughs> see nice. that? Yeah, you, that's right. I Subliminable. Do, I, do. I love his acting. I do. Um, I, as far as politics goes, I like to be informed enough. But I, I really cannot do it. And so to answer your question, no, I did not inherit any kind of And to answer your question, he does it. not listen to my radio show. So um, <laughs> No, I did not. I don't think anybody in my house listens to my radio show. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, that's something. <laughs> I actually accidentally listened. listened to it the other day when I got my car. It just happened to come on. And, and it was awesome. Luckily, I was pulling into the driveway. <laughs> well, you know, what, you know what's funny? is like I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of the WTF, WTF podcast with mm-hmm. Mark Maron. You know, he's kind of like an observational comedian and um he's he always talks about wtf is that a radio station (laughs) (laughs) Um, he always talks about how we can go through life and so many of us really don't know what our parents really do Mm -hmm. right i mean at least you have a great idea you go like who's your dad oh you heard you hear him every day he's on the radio like my dad 30 years plus as an accountant, a merchandise accountant. So every day he drove across the border from El Paso to Juarez, Mexico, and he ran the factories where little sweet Mexican ladies were sewing Victoria's Secret's underwear. Right. So he, so I know the secret, if you guys want to know. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and so I know that my mom was a nurse, and she's a cancer survivor, and she was in cancer research. 
That's it. That's all I really... And some people don't even really know that. Yeah, my dad went to work every day up the street. He had a briefcase. You know, this is cool. You can go, your dad's a celebrity. A lot of people don't know that his father was actually named El Chapo. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he didn't know that until much later. <laughs> no, I talk to people like friends of ours that, you know, that are you know his kids age and you know we, we're friends with their parents and i ask them what they do and they'll sit there and tell me for 15 minutes i still don't know what they do i mean it's it's some of the most i think that like they're like an imports exports or you know yeah. and you have no idea what they're doing i think these people are up to something is what i think the longer their title in corporate america oh, there's yeah. so many titles like senior executive account assistant to the head director right. you know like oh what do you really do? in charge of import export. well see i think <laughs> if you want my two cents i think that you're accusing these people of being up to something because but you didn't hear it here first, but you're going to hear it louder. You are in the Freemasons. <laughs> he and I thinks think I, this is a he front. He thinks I'm part of the conspiracy. I'm part of the Illuminati. Well, you have and, to be uh, invited. Like, I did have lunch one time with a guy who was, was a, um, in that. A really? Freemason, huh? mm-hmm. Yeah. My father was a Freemason. Uh, was he Illuminati or Freemason? Freemason. I mean, okay. Is there a difference? Oh, yes, I don't think you can difference. tell people you're in the Illuminati. That's right. You just have the, the secret handshake and the wink, right? right. That's right. Mm-hmm. But what I worry about sure is, is this, what, if you do much. get invited in and you start to learn some of the secrets, there's no oh, getting out. That's right. It's that like the mafia. Shows you told mm-hmm. about the Illuminati, right? We did, yeah. yeah. That's right. That was one of the first ones we talked about, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's interesting because, but, but people love the mystery of that. So they, they're going to uh, fill that empty vessel with whatever they want to put in it. So if you say the Illuminati and then you don't let them come to the meetings, oh my gosh, you got a conspiracy because they're going to just put whatever they want in there. You know, their wildest imaginings. Mm. Yes. Are you in the Illuminati? No. Okay, you sure? You in the mob? <laughs> now, I, I could be in the mob. Yeah, I was going to say, you know. I, I do, I, you know, I'm half Italian, but it's like the big half. It's yeah, it like, is a huge yeah, half. It's like yeah. if, you're, if you're Italian in anything else, the Italian gene is taking uh, over. it's dominant. It consumes, like, culturally, the food, everything. It's just... Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think, I'm, I, I think I'm Irish, Welsh, you know, Redmond, but we don't... We don't have tea and crumpets at my house. We have ziti and manicotti yeah. and wine and Is you know. it manicotti or manicot? Hey. 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 <laughs> but no, I did have an uncle that would just disappear for a while. Oh, and he'd yes, come back. Mm-hmm. And so there is some mystory about yeah, that. He was an imports export. Sure. See, that's what I'm saying. You know? Did you ask him where he'd go? No, you just don't ask. Don't ask yeah. your what uncle. You, what do you want to know for, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Whose business is it, huh? Who's asking? Uh, me. Don't worry about it. You get whacked. You get whacked. So at the tender age of 24, what do you, what's your, do millennials have like a strong vision for themselves at 24? Like at 24, I was getting my master's degree. I was on my first marriage. I knew what I wanted to do, but it was such a grind. It was such a struggle. Yeah. I mean, well, that's light years ahead of where I'm at. I, your, master's, <laughs> your master's wasn't in relationships, was it? No, I can tell you, I can, I am, I speak to people on how to s- cultivate success except in relationships because mm-hmm. it's one of area of my life that is, a, it's a yes. gaping wound that even the, the best wound care specialist <laughs> would have a hard time oh my. tending to. Wow. Yeah, we do need a... Anyway, so you I, were I saying, I'm sorry, we interrupted. So what, what, uh, as a millennial at 24, what are your aspirations? Was that the question? That is totally my question. Yeah, that was beyond yeah, that was perfect. Word for word. I um, I am very interested in getting into broadcasting, and I've always kind of seen it as you know you do it the radio, you do it like my dad has done it, you know. Yeah. But now you can do absolutely anything and put it. And you, you, we're talking about social media, and there's a lot of junk on it, but it's a double edged sword because. You get to put whatever you want. Yeah. Free market, competitive based on whatever's good. So yeah. I think that that's really exciting. And I'm glad to be doing something that's heading in the direction of creating something. That's yeah, that's what we're doing. We're, we're all create. Yeah. This is the mm-hmm. creation age. And, you know, we're every, you see people sitting on the beach and they can barely see their Instagram spe- feed, but all day long they're just, <laughs> they've got their Mai Tai and they're just, I'm like, oh, yeah. there's a beautiful ocean oh, right there. It. But hey, I'm, I'm guilty of it. I want to see pictures of avocados. <laughs> and oh, yeah. you know what I mean? It, <laughs> but what they're doing is they're looking at a picture of a beach while they're on the beach. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. <laughs> that's wild. But all the tools are here for us to create. I mean, look at, I bought these Audio Technica microphones. Oh, you can nice do too. the same thing. We got this table from Overstock.com. Jim <laughs> said, thing. "Call my friend to get the." Get That's the a thing. nice logo, by the That's way. Who didn't? Thank you. 
So yeah, there. you're in business. Yeah. I mean, we the tools are all there. We need one of those for the Pod Goat Studio. Except our studio is really small. You get legit. We're right in a walk-in there. closet at a cabin. So you know. Hey, this guy makes great money doing voiceover from a closet near you. See, right. true. The closets closet make the best studios. They don't need to look pretty. Yeah. yeah, you can even leave the clothes in them. Good for sound buffering. That's actually a great. one of the things I suggest to newbies. Mm -hmm. Is it true? Just do it in your closet. Yeah. Really? Well, you used to practice. You used to muffle when you used to practice. Right? Oh yeah, and, and back in the day, I would want to not let up on my practice routine. So, I would have friends and family over at the house, or maybe it would be a holiday, and my parents had this big walk-in closet. And so I take my drums into the walk-in closet, close the door, close the bathroom door, close their bedroom door, and all the clothes would muffle the sound mm -hmm. of the drums, so I can maintain my my practice. I was a nut. I was such a focused kid, man. Yeah. And came out of there wearing oh. his, his mother's lingerie, but you know that's a different story. So. I would do that <laughs> now. I, I got I got actually crazier as I got older. You know what I mean? It's like because you you could either grow up or you can be a drummer, but you can't do both. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. You yeah. know, and Jim is originally a drummer and can still play a mean beat. Mm -hmm. His kids play drums. You know, and but Jim, you know, you are probably the closest thing we have to a sponsor. So tell everybody what, J <laughs> what JM Voiceovers does. Jim McCarthy Voiceovers dot com. And it may, we do a, a bunch of voiceovers and production for different people. Yeah, there you go. Like the Pod Goats. Like the Pod Goats. Pod Goats. Yeah. Uh, Pickridge's Brain podcast. Yeah. I just did. I just redid Grant Cardone's um, uh, real estate made real estate investing made simple. I just redid their podcast. Did you study voiceover, or was it just a byproduct of your time in radio? Byproduct of my time in radio. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know how that goes. Yeah, you, you, you side hustle. Side. Was, yeah, yeah. That's what the kids call it now. Side yeah. hustle. I got so many side hustles. Hearing oh that, hearing that come out like that was just painful to hear. <laughs> but see, you do oh, hear me your, say uh, your side hustle. Of yes. you know, that, like my remember when we had Kevin Murphy on? I said, "Oh, your side hustle is your uh, he has this barbecue sauce." Yeah. You know, that's super spicy. He's got a tangy one. He's like, side hustle. He was laughing. <laughs> yeah, had to be there. But so you have the, you have this voice for radio. You could you could ride your dad's coattails. Oh, I know. I plan to do it. I mean, nep nepotism <laughs> works. I mean, it works in the music industry. Let me tell you. No, and, no doubt about so it. So you know, man. <laughs> no issue with that. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah. No issue with it? That's great. Well, yeah. the funny thing is, is that you have, um, you know, with the podcast, you kind of brought over a built-in audience and you had immediate great numbers right out of the gate. Yep. And Amazing. Still build it. The last time we spoke, you were at 10,000 download. No, you just hit 100,000, didn't you? We hit uh, 130,000? Yeah. 130,000. That's gorgeous. Yeah, I don't yeah. even look at my numbers. It's and you guys are on every <laughs> platform. Mm -hmm. Just Wherever about, yeah. Is that for YouTube and Facebook. Do you have to do that manually yeah. or with each platform or is there one thing that'll no, put you on every we, we got We go through Podbean. Podbean's the one, man. Yeah. I gotta and, do it. And so you just once you yeah, there's a, you got to manually do it the first time, right? You know, you gotta you gotta cut that path, and then once you do, when you put it out, it goes to all of them. Oh my god, that's and we're sexy. Fine. and then we find that there are all sorts of, I mean, there was one called I don't remember we, but when we find people are carrying this thing, then we put a link to them up on the website, so it sort of works both ways. But so you can go to podgoats.com, and then you'll find everywhere that we are, and there may be some places that we don't have on there, but. Some of these I'd never heard of before, but everybody, they're picking up the podcast and then they run it. So I don't know where they're getting it from, but you know, the more the merrier. I, I look at this like uh, we're selling polo shirts. We want to be in every department store. We want to be in Macy's, Dillard's, uh, Lord & Taylor. We want to be everywhere. Everywhere. That's the way you do it. I love that. I think even Lord & Taylor's out of business. So even the out of business. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, my, 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 my new girlfriend is in fashion. She's been in fashion for 27 years as a high-end fashion designer. And so she designs for a brand that's in like Barney's and Nordstrom mm -hmm. and Saks. And, and it's just amazing. That industry, much like the music business, has been so drastically affected by online buying, Amazon. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's disruption and surviving disruption. You know? I think that may come full circle, though. Well, and I was going to say, that's the other thing with your term of social media. Folks are getting to where they're just not leaving their house. Yeah. I mean, they're Uber Eats and food to themselves, the Amazon <laughs> packages. I mean, that, it is crazy. It's almost what was the movie where everyone was supersized? It was it was a oh, uh, 
uh, Wally. Wally. I mean, that is happening. It's yeah. happening. For High sure. fructose corn syrup oh, is yeah. we had got its drones revenge. flying around bringing people their groceries. <laughs> How lazy are we? And now, oh. and now Walmart will bring the groceries and put them in your refrigerator. That's pretty lazy. <laughs> that is that is not true. Is that it? is true. Are you yeah. joking? Oh yeah, Walmart will now. They're opening. They're starting this in the next few months. They're gonna put. They'll come and put the groceries in your refrigerator. You are kidding? Wow. Let's put them over there. Uh, right. Hi, no, no, to move the pizza yeah. over. Yeah. Uh, move the pizza. Okay. Anybody, it's all subscription based economy. Sure. Pull That's out right. the pork rinds for me. Plan from Big Dot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think Big Dot could be a could be a sponsor. Yeah. Well, well they, they are they, now. They, they yeah. could totally be a sponsor. But speaking of sponsors, you mm-hmm. also had a sponsor right out of the gate. That was a uh, Diamond Gusset Blue Jeans. Right? Diamond Gusset Jeans. Yeah. Two S's, one T. Diamond Gusset. G U S S E T. What's what I like there? I'm a denim. I'm a denim guy. That's what these are, man. Diamond Gusset. Are those skinny jeans? What is the gusset? I don't know what a gusset the, Well, I could show you my gusset, but then we... Uh, it's <laughs> right. It's, we have to cut. We're ruining our rating. It's, it's a, well, it's, <laughs> if you look under where your crotch is, it's a diamond gusset. That's what a gusset is. And it just, it makes them wear better. Yeah. And they've been doing this. And now they've got other jeans companies. They didn't, uh, I don't think they have a patent on it or whatever, but other jeans companies like Levi's and others have tried to emulate that, but they don't Duluth do it exactly. Duluth Trading Jeans uh, is doing what? the exact Duluth, yeah. yeah. Do who it, what is Duluth Trading yeah. Jeans. See, that's what I'm saying. Duluth? They do, they do TV sponsor. ads. You've seen the yeah. TV ads, the animated stuff where the guy's putting his... Um, yeah, but are, are they a sponsor of the podcast? No, the, the Duluth has been copying their yeah, Duluth sponsor. is the copying Gusset. Diamond Gusset, yeah. 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 The idea, so Diamond yeah. Gusset is, is now our you know, paying... You know, big time sponsor. They they've actually they they've been so thrilled with our results. They bought out all the avails, so really? we have three avails. Yeah, right. We do an intro. Hey, here's what we're talking about. We'll be back in a moment, and then you know, middle thing. We take a break, and then at the end, and they've bought all of it. And you guys incorporate them like this in an organic manner. You don't the, go to the ad. Do you go no, to we the go ad? To the ad yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah, it's like inserted in. So yeah, gotcha. It's dynamic insertions. Where they go. Phil's been. You've been talking about them for. Years. Yeah, they've been a sponsor of mine uh, 15 years or so. But um, it's interesting because we can talk about the dynamic ad insertion or uh, as opposed to baked in. This is sort of inside you know, podcasting. Yeah, there's so many wannabe podcasters. I'm sure they would love this but, information. I mean, th- this is this is a great way to do it. I mean, if you don't want to get into bed with a sponsor long term, you know, then you do the um, dynamic ad insertion and you just leave a little space. I mean, it's a fraction of a second. And then you can put this what Podbean does, and I think the lips in, lips in and the rest lips of them do it too. Yeah. yeah. So then you can change out sponsors. Now there, you know, people do the baked in ones like you're doing here, yep. you know, with Jim and it, but you're a long term thing, so that's fine. Yeah. But if you've got another sponsor and it turns out to be crap, <laughs> and you you want to sever the relationship, what do you do? They're on all your podcasts. Well, you do dynamic ad insertion. But I mean, if you get so big. And you get you you open up more avails at some point. Is that what you're gonna, you think you're going to? Yeah, and and the other thing too is when you're doing this, you can you can decide. Well, this sponsor is only in Nashville, so we're going to put them in Nashville. And then you can you can do the dynamic ad insertion for all over the country, all over the world. Really, it's worldwide. You could say, well, we got a sponsor in I don't know uh, the UK, so their ad will only run in the UK. Amazing, and you can sell it that way too. Wow. Yeah, it is really it's it's amazing what you can do with it. We're just now scratching the surface. Well, this is the next big medium. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is definitely. And that's definitely. why, you know, Cumulus yeah. has gotten into it. And of course, they're second largest radio corporation in the world, but they understand the podcast. And we're, we're the first locally originated podcast that they've, that they've uh, gotten behind. I mean, they've done stuff like they've taken their syndicated shows and they podcast them, but <laughs> we're, and they've done sports stuff. But we're the first one that's originated in a local market that they're now branching out and selling. And so. We're sort of like the guinea pig for cumulus on this and thing. That's on the pod goats. That's mm-hmm. on the pod goats. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. So great. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is really. It's just. I mean, because the radio stations, the radio companies understand that. You know, like you know, Campbell's been talking about with his age. They're not consuming radio stuff like you know we used to. Right. Yeah. See, on on the last episode that I did with you guys. When we, we, one of the big kind of gags we did was the fact that we had like all these funny, <laughs> right? We, you know, all these sponsors. Yeah, we had Mercedes Benz <laughs> the City, we had Big Dot, we had Diamond Gusset, <clears throat> Avengers Endgame, which actually by chance just was announced today that uh, they're going to be re releasing that movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. They're, they're I still not seeing it. What's that? The theaters. The the theater. They're going to wow. re release it to take out Avatar. 
as the all-time best-selling movie. What? Wow. They're, they're so that's their goal, huh? They're, they're, I think they're like four. Yeah, they're so close. They're like wow. like $20 million away from being. Oh, they'll do that in an afternoon, yeah. man. Isn't that crazy? That doesn't happen a lot. That's going to happen. Wow. So anyway, I made a gag reel of all, like, you know, all of us talking about all this stuff. <laughs> right, all the sponsors. like 17 sponsors. <laughs> I got to get, uh, yeah, I got to see that. Yeah. I, I tagged you in it. So. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll check it out. <laughs> Thanks this for is, noticing. I'll, I'll go back into my ashtray now. <laughs> this is good for us. If you're just listening to the audio, <laughs> if you're just listening to the audio of this, you your mic for whatever reason, we bought four mics, but we can't you find can't the find other one. one. You but can't I, find the other one. I love, I love that Jim is like slightly off the mic. It's like got this. Yeah. It's just a me. It's this comedic effect. Like, who is the guy? It's like, you should just be happy that he's on camera. It's right? like Paul and George with the Beatles. You know, they're sharing the mic, and because he he played left-handed bass and he paid right-handed guitar and so they're singing into the same <laughs> mic you know this is you guys on our, on our other show he's off <laughs> camera he's like my off camera for a reason and <laughs> and and he goes are you ever gonna put me on camera uh no i say, oh did i ask that really yes <laughs> <laughs> he's so insecure isn't he <laughs> so tell me tell me about your um your your film career as a writer producer actor there was something about brett michaels producing a film that you did yeah oh good lord <laughs> me and brett michaels just like it yeah uh, campbell's probably the only person who's ever seen it have you seen it actually yeah oh i've seen it i watch it i watch it probably once every year or so do you really yeah i, I sit down and watch it and oh you're kidding you're joking it, no i <laughs> i promise you this I is did. the secret handshake with kevin sorbo no that's a different movie no, okay. this is a this letter is from death row a letter from a letter death, death row produced by brett michaels and, yeah, I and starring brett by michaels too, yeah. right what uh, written by him, right? Written by him, yeah. Was this I'm his... sorry, Brett. That is about the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't it like? Have you seen Plan <laughs> Nine from Outer Space? Is that worse? I mean, that's like you one of the, it's, it's supposed to be the all time worst movie of all no, time. No, that's right. You're right. It was this movie, um, Letter from Death Row, was um, well, he's on death row, and I play his lawyer. So wow, that's the I can see but, that. But it was huge in Japan. So I'm I thinking, I've never been to Japan, but it I'm showed at Budokan. Mobbed. Yeah, I may get mobbed when I get off the plane. Whether it be hilarious, ah, oh, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Who know. knows? And maybe then they'll move there. You know, we'll just start a whole new career. <sighs> anyway, but yeah, I did the, I did. That was the first movie I did, and probably should have been the last. But um, <laughs> it, it's uh, not even a B movie. It's sort of C D maybe oh, I, on yeah. down the alpha. That was my first acting gig. Was being in a horror film that I was hoping it would make it to Redbox, and I think it's going to be distributed like. In hotel rooms in China, oh, well, there you and, go. and then that that led to another horror film that is actually on Netflix right now. Really? And I played a radio, an over caffeinated radio DJ. Really? Well, what's the name of the movie? It's called All Light Will End, and it's a, it's a pretty small part, but it was like totally in my lane. I didn't have to put on any, uh, any wigs or mm -hmm. do. It's not a period piece. And then I was just on a TV show called Happy on the Sci Fi Channel. It's like it was like a runaway hit for two seasons, and I got to act with Christopher Maloney. Wow. So like, and now Wait, I got my you were on Happy. I was on Happy. I played a. Um, that show was huge. Episode two hundred eight of the second season. I remember everybody talking about that show. I know, and I think it just got canceled. Mm. But well, at least you made the cut. You I, know? I, you're I, in there. I'm in they there. They can't change that. Can I got my really. footage, and th to the kindness of the writer, director, producer, I got my SAG card. Well, good. Yeah. And yeah. I, did, I did this in four years, so that's where I am in my acting career. I got the SAG card when I did um, Threat Matrix on ABC. Nice. But I was never on camera. And it's hilarious because, you know, the guy that, um, uh, Jamie Denton, who played the plumber on Desperate Housewives. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a friend of mine. <laughs> so he said, he called me up, he says, I was just going through the script, and it calls for a talk show host. But it's not on camera. It's just audio. He said, would you be interested in doing it? I said, sure. So I cut everything in the studio in Nashville and sent it to him. Yeah. And it's hilarious. And he, he emailed me back. He said, this is so funny because every, in every scene you're in, everybody's cutting you off. I said, that's my life story. you know. So I'm talking about, blah, 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 And they start talking. And I cut this guy off. So I did that. And um, so I had to join the Screen Actors Guild Lovely. to do that. You know? Did you keep it? I've kept it for no. your, for the, because I, because it's like a no. real union with like nice benefits and insurance. And yeah, all that stuff. I'm excited, yeah. like yeah, really, well, to see what the health care plan is like. Yeah. You know? And then you also had the all too famous line, We're Dropping Minnesota. Yes, that was Shrugged. from Atlas Shrugged, the, 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 the trilogy of, of Atlas Shrugged movies, and I was in the last one. My scene is the pivotal scene. You know, it really, the whole movie can't work without that one line. Let me zoom in on you. Because. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's so dramatic. It can't work without the line. So here we are. We're sitting around a round table like this, except it's bigger, and it's in a hotel, and it's made of wood. And uh, we're sitting there. It, we're the, all the henchmen. We're all the looters and the moochers in this, if you've ever read uh, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. And so uh, we're trying to decide who we're going to cut next. You know, I mean, we're just, we're, we're, we're tearing the country to pieces. And so they're trying to make a decision on the Minnesota rail line and they're going around and everybody's having their say about it. And then I say, we're dropping Minnesota <laughs> and everybody takes a drink and we all take a toast. Great. And, oh, it was dramatic. Hey, the, the, you know, it I'll, does. It, it hits. I mean, it really and does. then the music. The is like, oh, yeah. And the music, yeah, and the music and then it goes to the next scene, you know, and I'm going, wow. I will say I helped this man audition for a movie in which I think you had three lines. You were his reader. It, you were his yeah, reader. I was yeah. his reader. Yeah. And we sat there for hours. It was three <laughs> just little short sentences. Right, what's, hey, line, how are you? Line, what's hey, I line? need those papers by <laughs> Friday. And then, great, leave them on my desk. And every time you'd walk in, hey, leave them on my desk. Oh. No, no, no. And I was like, dude, how did you even remember the line we're dropping Minnesota? Like, how long did it take you to memorize that? Oh, well, let me tell you real quick about that, too, because, you know, they put us, they put me in, and Grover Norquist was in that scene, Americans for Tax Reform. What they did, they took some folks that had been really friends and helping them promote the other two movies, and they said, hey, you're going to be extras in the movie. And so I got there the day, was shooting in LA at a, uh, a hotel they use in the middle of LA just for shooting movies now. And I got there, I think my scene was like at 10.30 or something. I got there at 9 o'clock, you know, because I'm eager. And, of course, they didn't start shooting until 4. Oh, but um, God, I even wait. they said, you can go and sit in your trailer. Oh, I love it. I have a trailer? It's incredible. Oh, so I went and they had my character's name on the trailer. There's nothing in it, but it was just, you know, it was like one of those school trailers. It was really small. Like, it looked like um, it should have probably had a toilet in it, but it didn't. Oh, yeah. You know, like a little outhouse. Oh, they call those the, uh, the honey pots. Yeah. You have to go, where's the honey pot? And then I had, yeah, then I had actually, um, what, do you, what do you call these people? On, uh, not a double, but a, a stand in. A stand in. Yeah. Have stand in. I got my picture taken with a stand in. This guy's only job was to stand there and get mic checked for me. Lighting and mic. Isn't that great? So we got ready to do this thing, and I'm going into the sound thing, and they're putting the mic. They put the mic in the in the bow tie. You don't even see the mic. Yeah. And so uh, the producer who had gotten me to come to L.A. to do this, he came walking by, and he stopped me with me and said, what are you doing? And she says, I'm micing him up. He said, he doesn't have any lines. Why are you micing him up? And she said, well, he's already mic'd now. He said, well, God. I guess we got to get him a line. Went this is the, incredible. Went and talked to the director and said, okay, come back. Here's, a, here's your line. We're dropping Minnesota. And that was it. And that was my line. Great. I did not know that. That's how I got that. That girl <laughs> gave you your line. She gave me my big break in, in Hollywood. Funny Thank things you. funny things like that happen. You know, on a movie set, they'll be like, I know that Adam Sandler does this all the time. There'll be an actor that's like an extra or just maybe just has, just, you know, no lines. And he'll be like, he goes, Are you, do you have your SAG card? And he goes, no, man. He goes, say this. Come on. Yeah, now you're in. You know what I mean? That's, That's so cool. Great. Yeah. That's a really cool well, thing. Well, I was, I was doing, you were talking about uh, Secret Handshake, which is a movie I did with Kevin Sorbo. And so um, I'm asking the director, director Howie, I said, you know, how do you want me to play this? And he says, I don't know. What, you know, what, do, what do you want to do? I said, well, I could do a William F. Buckley. And uh, 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 William F. Buckley. And so I... I do my lines like this, and Kevin Sorbo, I'm doing the lines with, you know, we're in this scene. So he didn't hear me telling the director this. And we get in there, we're doing this thing, and we go through the first take, and I'm like, oh, 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 but, but uh, I was uh, saying so and so and so and so and so and so and so. And they got cut, everything's great. Kevin said, that was the worst British accent I've ever heard in my life. I said, it's William F. Buckley for crying out loud. He's not British. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sort of northeastern or something and so he didn't quite get it but that stayed in too so i, I got to keep the william f Buckley didn't accent. somebody mistake you for severus snape that was on, on the, the set, set of, <laughs> yes that was on the set of uh, atlas shrug this guy kept looking at me the whole day you know on these movies who's I mean, that who's that that's from Harry Potter. Professor Snape oh, from Harry Potter. Oh my God, Alan, Alan Rickman. Rickman. Ah, ah. I should have just said I Alan can totally Rickman. see it <laughs> <laughs> so huh. we're on the set and and I'm looking at okay no we're cool we're cool, cool? he's wondering if the if the fans you're just now wondering that hello <laughs> <laughs> the horrible hor horrible host <laughs> no I'm on the set of Atlas Shrugged I'm just either sitting in my trailer or walking around watching them shoot other scenes or going where they're you know serving lunch and they got I mean rack of lamb they oh, got everything nice. 
And so this guy, I noticed this guy keeps looking at me, you know, from across the way. And so after I got through with lunch, uh, he came up next to me. He says, I just wanted to say hello. I, I, I always wanted to meet you. He said, I, I, I know who you are. And I said, you do? He said, yes, you were in, you were in the Harry Potter movies, weren't you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not Alan Rickman. For crying. I mean, everybody thinks I'm this dude. But that's the guy thought I was him. Yeah. It is uncanny. I mean, you got well, to we did the that doppelgangers side. in the episode. Yeah. We showed them. You, you know. can get preferential treatment and use it at restaurants. Well, know? now that he's gone, he's yeah. left, and you know, uh, well, yeah. I'm going to go out as the Alan Rickman experience, huh? Yeah. What do you think, huh? Do you know? That I may need a drummer. They're, they're doing these, um, these. What do you call them? With where it's like the holograms. Uh, yes. Yeah, I like, like the like Ronnie James Dio has been dead for like t- eight, nine, ten years, and his like he's got a band backing the hologram. Cool. It's, creepy, it's like right? it's like weird. it's like cool the idea of it but then when you see it you're like this, we, well, I, we paid for this yeah exactly. well i saw this many years ago when they were first experimenting on this they did the uh, i guess it was the 25th anniversary of elvis's death what, what year would that have been he died in 77 do the math anyway yep. so they did it at the pyramid in memphis and we were there we actually we got invited we the broadcast backstage but that's what they did they had all of his band you know all of the the imperials anybody that would back them up jd sumner the stamps quartet said jd sumner was dead but and then they had elvis as a and i've never seen it it came out on laser disc that's how long ago it was but i I don't think i've ever seen that but that was the first time that i'd heard that they were going to do that with a hologram Mm -hmm. so they had elvis with all of his background uh, bands yes through the years I, th- I think, uh, yeah, um, but, uh, my buddy drummer Paul Lyme was the house drummer. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see? Wow, that's super cool. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Two yeah. degrees of separation. Now, that makes sense to do it once, but to take it on tour yeah, and charge a hard no. ticket, I don't know. No. Maybe they did. I don't know. Well, I'd, you know, I'd give them hologram money. <laughs> that's, right. that's how I'd pay for that. Yeah. Well, wasn't Mariah Carey trying to do this where she wanted to play, like, 50 different shows on the same night wow. as a hologram. Oh, I mean, that's a cash on, yeah. grab oh, for sure. That is a cash grab. I rem- are the tickets less money if you see the hologram? That's Not with Mariah Carey. She wants her money. Yeah, yeah. she wants her money. Yeah, well, she'll, she'll say you'll never know which one's real. I mean, you just go to the concert and which one is me. That's not a bad idea. Huh? Yeah. It's like I would- a scene from the Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> a lot of green screen man and you sit up going i didn't see it does a hologram actually fall off the stage into the audience i think uh they <laughs> isn't there like 20 or 30 marvel movies and you really have to like watch them to like really it's appreciate my, it's my late guilty pleasure is it really yeah yeah if you haven't guessed i stopped at iron man 2 i mean i can't do it anymore yeah tony stark he was he's good he was cool yeah. but i just it's just rdj man he did he did it right but then you got green lantern was he was he a marvel guy I'm or is he not, DC uh, guy? Not, no. not in this. You're That's DC. Sorry. <laughs> you, you you know a ton about superheroes. I I'm kind of into Marvel, in but right, right. I like right. this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was my guy. I I just for some reason we, it was a family thing. We watched Infinity War and every, Infinity War tied them all together, and mm-hmm. I just I'm like, I, I got really fascinated by the multi-dimensional plot lines. That I mean, it's it's complex. When you think about Stanley and how brilliant he was, mm-hmm. oh my God, to create all that and to have all this this fan base, this loyal fan base, all those you gotta years. Remember though, he was the Steve Jobs of Marvel. He had a lot of people in his organization creating a lot. Of that. Yeah, he just probably Are had. You a- dissing Stan Lee here? I mean, you're you call yourself a Marvel fan, mm-hmm. huh? You know. He was probably like, look at, I got another <laughs> idea for another superhero. This guy was bitten by. A scorpion, okay, <laughs> and and then and then it's radioactive, and then you guys know what to do with it. Go, okay. I want <laughs> I want 40, 40 issues by the end of the week. Well, think about it this way: Marvel back in 08 as a studio was on the brink of bankruptcy. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. was on the brink of destroying his career because mm-hmm. he, he had a lot of tumultuous times prior to that. Um, Iron Man was a tertiary character in in the whole comic realm, right? Um, Tertiary. Tertiary. Great word. He's been reading. Yeah, He's been like reading. That. You know what I mean? He was, yeah. was kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a sidekick, right. sort of. Right. He wasn't really that big. He wasn't Superman. He mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, Thor. But um, that, that, that trifecta lifted that whole organization out of the brink of destruction. Oh, I wanted to see that. I mean, I, I've always been a Robert Downey Jr. fan. And, um, you know, he was, but he was trying to make a comeback yeah. with that and uh, the Sherlock Holmes stuff, too. So. Which was a good movie. Mm-hmm. It was a Very good. Movie. Yeah, You're Campbell. Not into 
I I like my, I appreciate Marvel for what you're saying. Like Kevin Feige, that's the guy who handles all that. He is. It's so well thought out, yeah. and like everything is. You can just tell the planning that went into it. So I appreciate it from that standpoint. And I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So oh, I wish yeah. Star Wars would do that. But, of course, there's a lot of divide. Are we talking in, Star uh, Wars now? There's a, a lot of divide in the galaxy right <laughs> we now, are folks. Just, we are just nerds. So when I went and saw <laughs> Iron Man back in 08, mm-hmm. it was by force, by a friend of Not by force, but he says, hey, you're, you're going to this, shit, this movie. And I'm like, all right, fine. You know, we went and saw it. It was a great movie. Really enjoyed it. And we've always kind of been into it ever since. Um, I called him after we saw Endgame, and I said, hey, I really want to thank you. This this whole run has been so immensely as 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 you get older you kind of lose the things that you you enjoy you know mm-hmm. you, you kind of at least for me I'm tr- I'm really trying to find what do I really like to do other right. than work all the time and that's been one of my things and 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 I thanked him for it he says you know he's always been a comic book guy ever since we were kids and everything and he says you know what the funny thing is why did they choose Thanos as the villain yeah, because he was kind of like a C, B, or C role villain. Right. And I didn't and, know that. And it was that um, you know, Josh so, Brolin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did a wonderful job with the character. But, you know, for someone who doesn't know Marvel, that he was a formidable opponent. Yeah. You know oh, I mean? yeah. Formidable. But the funny thing is, this is tertiary. Now I'm seeing the business plan. You know, this is how I think these days. I'm going, well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Start with the weakest villain and build up for. They got the next 60, 70 years laid out. Oh, there you go. But I thought it was the end game. No. No. One phase. (laughs) It's never the end, Rick. Never Never the end. One phase, man. (laughs) I promise, Jim, we're going to have another mic for you, but this is great. Did you see uh, see those movies? You know, I I, I saw a lot of the Marvel movies, but um, I thought Black Panther, as much as critical praise as it had, was so slow. I, yeah, I, I liked Black Panther okay, but I, and folks are probably not going to like to hear this, mm-hmm. I could not do Wonder Woman. Now, the, that's DC, but... Oh, a lot everybody, of folks could do Wonder Woman. We met... That, <laughs> that, get that symbol. That was, yeah, get the, we, get the we, flipping we symbol. We met her when, when we did Saturday Night Live. She was, really? the, she was the host. And Gal she, Gadot? Yeah, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's a very luxurious... She's just an elegant woman. Persian. I think I she's know. Persian or something. She's just very exotic. Yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> she's, like, she's like the Mercedes CLS. Right. Of They're course. just like that, yeah. Or like the nice, slim fit diamond gusset jeans. That's right. She's very diamond much like Gutta, that. Yeah. Are those the same thing? Yeah. Or Mercedes Benz of Music City. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, this is so darn good. This is going to have to be two episodes. You know that. It's got to be a two parter. The, yeah. de- the debut. Yeah. The return. Now, How many different cut topics? I know you didn't want to talk about in- the um, politics, but what about. I- Inconvenient Truth. I read yes, that about you. What was yes. that all about? That was all about. It was a rebuttal to Al Gore's movie. Okay. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> now, and it's and it's no longer in print, as it were. So we and that was my choice. I mean, I just you know, it, what digital, we're digital, maybe. Yeah, I think we're going to probably put it on YouTube for free or somewhere for free. Oh, oh. whoa! God, that could have been bad. That, <laughs> that could have been awful. Uh, yeah, we're going to put it somewhere for free, I believe. Rich um, needs some real gear. <laughs> you got it, man. Look at that out the kinks. It's amazing. Yeah, this is the debut episode, so yeah. we have problems. Yeah, But you guys uh, are great guests. Note to self, well, tighten the mic stand. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, so, you know, so that's won several awards and did pretty well at the box office. Mm-hmm. We actually were in the movie theaters, uh, a movie theater or two for that. So, and it's inconsistent truth. An inconsistent truth, yeah. I was about to go oh, back say, to that as well. Did I say an inconvenient truth? Oh, I said, no, inconsistent, right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, you guys, you've been doing this a while with the pod goes. Yeah. People are becoming more aware of you, Campbell. Mm-hmm. Any opportunities coming your way? People reaching out for chicks? Gigs? Yeah, women Mo- throwing yeah, mostly, underwear. Yeah, mostly chicks. chicks. Yeah. yeah, mostly chicks yeah. throwing underwear. Do it while you're young. Actually, it's, but it's my crowd, and they're throwing depends. So <laughs> it's not really a sex. That is just so I gross. definitely. Is there a symbol on here? <laughs> There's something here. That yeah, get <laughs> Guys, check this out. Yeah, that was a broken glass. That was more yeah, likely. That, <laughs> that was, I bet I say, that was more accurate. Oh, that was the, that, that, we like, that was the failure. Let's find the crash. I like the failure one. But, uh, That's a bomb. We are in Crash Studios. <laughs> now, there you go. There, there, there it, it is. is. Yeah. Yes. Rim shots. That's Laugh USA on that's Sirius XM. Yeah, that's, that's, I listen to a lot of comedy in the car, you know, just because people are like, 
I don't know if you guys get this, but you know, my profession isn't being a musician. You know, mm-hmm. for playing the drums for forty two years, so people are like, what do you listen to? What's your favorite kind of music? Or when you're in an Uber, they're like, what do you? Do you want to listen to some music? I'm like, nothing. Just yeah. silence. Yes. And I got my hearing te- uh, tested yesterday for the first time in a decade. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> they said, I get your hands they said you, really, uh, <laughs> you know, for somebody who's has your career path and has been exposed to so much loud noise, not bad. But yeah. they said, watch out because you don't want to be the, you know, the guy at 49 years old that's wearing hearing aids. Well, see, people say that, but you're behind the drums, not in front of them. It's the guy that's, you know, been on the front row at every concert. He's the guy that's got the hearing aid now. Yeah. yeah. The advent of the in ears. I mean, yeah. Well, the thing about the inner monitors, which we've been doing for 20 years now, is we're cramming this device into our inner ear canal and, jacking and it jacking it. Mm. So it's the same thing as these musicians from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, where we play with the giant wedges yeah. and just like a set of drums at full volume is like a jet airliner taking yeah. off. It's like 120 dB. Mm. And I'm really surprised I don't have more. I've got a dip in 6 and 8K. So like the super high frequency stuff, she goes, raise your hand when you hear the high notes. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm a, I'm a dip in the in the medium high. He didn't hear that either. I love that. Thank you. I'm a dip in the medium high, and my wife says that's exactly where her voice is. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's your, that's your uh, yeah. I, Selective that's right. hearing. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What's you were, the seat? How long you have you been married? You need to s- s- speak higher or lower. I can, you know. how, how long you how long have you been married? Uh, th- almost thirty years. Twenty nine years. So what's this year. so this is the I, one part of my life I cannot get right. So what's mm-hmm. the secret? The secret? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Cam, you look like a mate. Cam, no, Cam. Well, you've been a voyeur, <laughs> voyeur of the, the yes. whole process. Um, and it shocks me that you ended up with her. It is. It's shocking to me too. I think it's even more shocking to her. But uh, <laughs> yeah, she's. I keep her medicated. That's the. That's the. Rich, that's the. Uh, that's the trick. But seriously, folks, I'm here all week. I'm up. No, up we the actually. Um, we go out on a date night once a week. That's great. And we've been doing that for years, long time. And it gives us a chance to get away from <laughs> the kids yep. and, uh, you know, just be the two of us. It's a different dynamic. I started doing it. Michael W. Smith told me. I'm sorry, I dropped a name here. Oh, I love it. Drop them all the way. Uh, this is a safe, safe Michael space. Michael W. Smith told me that he started when his kids were of going out on sort of a date night with each one individually because it gives you a different dynamic and he's got a bunch of kids and so i started doing that with you guys we didn't do it a lot but i would take them out individually That's because cool. now, do you have a favorite child yeah but he's not here <laughs> <That's what's right. laughs> i know <laughs> and the crowd roars uh, at that oh my god <laughs> Uh, but seriously, folks, there's so many fun buttons here. It really mm-hmm. is. I mean, it's. You, you guys should do, should do an episode. See if you if you think this is fun, you ought to be listening to the pod goats. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm I mean, telling exactly. you, God, if you're getting a kick out of this, <laughs> I'm telling you what. So, uh, what's in the what's in the future? What's on the future for you guys? I know you're gonna you want to get into broadcasting. You're gonna keep doing pod goats. Do what? Mm-hmm. He needs uh-huh. to do acting. Is what he needs to do. He what would be a great actor. I don't know that that's really in our genes, man. It's it, well. It, it's not mine, but mine are diamond gusset. You're not wearing those today. So you, but seriously, yeah. <laughs> I think you ought to do. He's he I, could, he's a great artist. Yeah, he's just very creative in all sorts of. Just Thank you, so Father. creative. I uh, <laughs> I I kind of feel like our paths with this podcasting stuff are in a lot of ways connected, in a lot of ways they're not. And right now, you know, I love doing what we're doing but we both you know we want to branch off he wants to do his own show i want to do stuff that's more he's you know, leaving me is what he's saying he's like this is, trying, this is you, the beatles trying to break this it in up. a nice way <laughs> you know i'm gonna right now that, uh, you're, it's gonna come to an end you, we actually plan this as a big pr stunt <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> for the podcast and hoping that people will beg no no please don't break up the pod goats but like like you were saying with um you know podcasts are becoming one of the biggest mediums and you know, I want to. I want to get into. I mean, sort of what y'all are doing. You know, producing other podcasts and just keep churning out content. I love it. And we've got we've got an umbrella. We got Com World Media, so that you know is the umbrella for this. We're going to start producing more podcasts. We'll do one on him. I'm going to definitely do another on me. And when then we may rope uh, your brother or brothers into doing another podcast that may be coming under the umbrella too. So we just got big plans. 
I love that. It's like the uh, just creating content, you know. Mm-hmm. I tell in my speeches, I talked about the three C's. You connect with people, you communicate with people, and you collaborate with people. Mm-hmm. And most of the successful people I know that are that are, that are are creatives, it's just all collaborations with people that you're comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah. And then all the tools are here for us to, to, to create and turn it all out. I love it. The, my biggest uh, enemy is just time. Because, like, you know, I'm on a tour bus or I'm on an airport and Jim's like, we need to create more content. Or, or when you get a review of your of my other podcast, they're like, love this. Um, can you try not to go three months between episodes? <laughs> 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 you know, but anyways, well, that's the that's the challenge. It yeah. is a challenge. So you're moving forward. You're going to how long do you see yourself staying at the how does that work? I'm slowing down. man. Yeah. Um, do you get uh, bored with it? You have to. With the radio stuff. Yeah. I just don't know how you would talk on, four hours a day. <laughs> we could trim it out. We could trim it out. No, I'm just kidding. No, I mean, I, it. when I get bored, I'll stop doing it. Right. So, I mean, right now, I mean, whether you like him, love him, hate him, Trump is just radio gold for talk radio. I mean, he's just absolute radio gold. I would, I mean, I would feel like I was missing out. So, I won't be, I, as long as Trump's in office, I'm going to still be doing talk radio. And then maybe when, if he gets beat or if he does four more years, and then maybe that'll be my signal that it's time to go. There can't be anybody as entertaining as Donald Trump and the president. It's going to be such a lit down. I mean, think of whoever the replacement is. It's just not going to be nearly as much fun. I mean, the tweets, the insults, I mean, you know, the comebacks. The and dude is a piece of he work. Is just, he's man. a piece of work. <laughs> he really is. He's absolutely hilarious. And he knows how to get an audience. He does. He does. So I think I ride the, I ride the Trump train until it comes back into the station, and then maybe mm-hmm. I get off and I don't I don't just sit on my boat. But on other either side of that coin, you've got you know, that's that's the whole essence of talk radio. You can make a show out of nothing. In office. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. You know, like, that's, yeah. That's been the magic sweet pill. For years. Sure. I mean, we did it even when George W. was in there. So I mean, you know, he was entertaining. Yeah, halfway. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, he had some great phrases, Dale. That's right. What did he? He misquoted the. He was trying to say the fool me once. Fool me once. Shame, shame on you. On fool me, me twice. Shame fool on me. me. Yeah. Uh, and he said, "Yeah, fool, fool me, me once. <laughs> shame on you." <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, he was such and a then Fool me twice. Allow myself. Well, you can't get fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that exit ramp. Oh, you can just see go. it. It leaves his mind, yeah. and he realizes, I don't know what the hell this is. <laughs> I have no idea how this joke is. That was like Michael Scott and getting into his life a little bit right there. Yeah. I'm, a little, you know, I'm, not, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. <laughs> <laughs> a little stitious, yeah. Uh, so what's going on with you, Jim? What's coming up for you, man? Um, you know, just working, doing, uh, doing what are, this. What are all the things you do? Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's, I, I spin plates. I, uh, big Dot Lighting, Big Dot. You're, he's, Phil is actually very familiar with Big Dot Lighting. Big Dot Lighting. Right. Uh, BigDotLighting.com. Call that. for a free energy assessment right That's now, right. and they'll come out and check out your entire business Remember and tell copy. you how you can save money by switching to commercial LED lighting. It's absolutely unbelievable. You even have a lamp program. Where you don't even have to worry about it. They just come out and take care of the lights. If they burn out, they'll handle it. So you don't have to do it. It's just absolutely perfect. And it starts with a free energy assessment. You go to big.lighting.com. Big.lighting.com. Tell them Phil Valentine said, hey. Hey. Oh, my God. You are. I'm going to get a bill now. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yeah, that and uh, you know, producing podcasts. And we should probably hook up and talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Oh my God, this has been so fun, guys. You, any closing thoughts, statements, anything that's on your mind? I thank you so much for yeah, having me. Thank you guys fun. for coming. I, lo- I love the Such ambiance pros. in here. You yeah, know, I, I, too. I definitely need to straighten up a little bit, but uh, it's just, this is a safe place. You know, yeah. just to be creative. You need some more drums, though, Rich. So <laughs> many drums. You know, th- that kit right there, yeah. it is unbelievable. This is my proof of a higher power. Um, those are the drums that were on stage during the Vegas shootings. Really? That set of drums. Oh, that's right. I forgot because you were there, huh? 
I was there, and those set of drums were on stage for like. How? I mean, I know we're about. Well, done, it was. But it was. It, you know, I try not to talk. About, talk very frightening, and it was a gift from the heavens to have you know this gift of extended life, and no one in my organization was was hurt. You know, mm-hmm. it was it was it was it was a gift. It really was. But those drums sat out there in the burning heat under Las Vegas for like another six weeks or something like that. And really? I met the police. There's like a police officer that he's a drummer. Mm-hmm. He's like a hobbyist drummer. He says, and I got to meet him and he said, I watched your drum. I kept an eye on your drums for like six weeks and they, they covered him up, but it was a crime scene. Nothing ever happened to those drums. Not a scratch, wow. nothing, not the cases weren't hurt. The drums weren't hurt. And I was like, those are never going anywhere. They're staying in this. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Yeah. That's something. And that's, I can still make music on them. That's know? a reminder to be thankful to get gratitude. Yeah. Every, that's the first thing I do every morning is I get in that shower and I do that gratitude list I don't know what you guys do, but just to, just to, you know, it could be, you know, for the shower, I don't know. I usually me. pee. The water. But, um, <laughs> as long as there's some sort of water running, you know. All right. But I'm grateful for that. Yeah, for sure. What does that gratitude list look like What for you? How does that, how does that go? Family, friends, health, shelter. Um, thank you for my talent so I can make a difference in people's lives because my purpose in life is to, change people's lives and affect people in a positive way. And I could do that through music and I could do that through education. So mm-hmm. I'm a big proponent of music education and, uh, and entertainment and, uh, passing, paying it forward, you know, for a future generation of creatives. So, uh, that's just the first thing I do, Jimmy. Right <laughs> Phil, thank you so much for being here. Rich, good to see you, Campbell, my friend. Thank really, you so really, much. really awesome guys. And I'm going to give you guys a copy of my <gasps> book. You can read it on a Southwest Airlines flight in 90 minutes. Crash course discuss. It's available on Amazon.com. And you guys would be proud of me. I just recorded the version for Audible. Ooh. Oh, so yeah. I went in. I, I took Jim has been a VO coach. I went to another friend of mine who who is he's, he voices Pokemon. He's on Pokemon. He does a lot of anime. And so we recorded the audible version of it and then in and out of each chapter there's drums you know which is going to be a theme for me because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to try to write a book a year guys we were talking about that the other, there's actually like some music in yes yeah, like the, the audiobook the drums come in and it's like chapter one that's exactly we were talking <laughs> about that the other day about how that's dun, such dun, a big dun, thing dun, that's going to be the thing is mm-hmm. enhancing it making it an experience more instead than of just, just somebody yeah. reading i did yeah. an audio book too but mine's basically i just read but i do the and character voices too though. great oh yeah I, you do those character voices and the german ones are borderline they, ah, oh, you're, hate being foolish. <laughs> <laughs> you're being foolish for making fun of my german yeah. accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so, so so much more engaging because the personality of the author and the messaging comes through in such a clearer way. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, everyone, listen to the Phil, Phil Valentine Show on WWTN, 3 to 7 Central Standard Time every single day. And be on the lookout for this young man as he uh, climbs the creative ladder. And check out Pod Goats. That's a hybrid fusion word, podcast, and goats, which I found out is greatest of all time. We're sort of presumptuous. But, yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. Pod Goats. So check out podgoats.com. Is it podgoats.com? Podgoats.com. And wherever you can find pod casts and jim we love you thank you for all the technological help in making this happen doing shazam <laughs> oh that's uh that's johnny hole my drum tech shazam oh, oh, oh that's great yeah. that's that was you oh my god he is funny guys thanks for tuning in to the debut episode of the rich redmond show and we will talk to you soon yeah. this has been the rich redmond show subscribe rate and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.